The Yellowstone National Park is a vast and mysterious place, a sprawling wilderness of swamps and marshes that seems to stretch on forever. As a park ranger, I have spent countless hours patrolling its dark and twisted pathways, always on the lookout for anything out of the ordinary. One night, as I made my way through the deep woods, I heard a strange and unsettling sound. It was like nothing I had ever heard before, a deep and guttural growl that seemed to echo through the trees. Instinctively, I drew my flashlight and followed the sound, moving deeper and, and deeper into the darkness. But as I turned a corner, I came face to face with a creature that I could not identify. It was massive and powerful, with thick fur and glowing eyes that seemed to stare deep into my soul. For a moment, I was frozen in terror, unable to move or speak. But as the creature advanced on me, I found my voice shouting and waving my flashlight in a desperate attempt to ward it off. But it was no use. The creature was too strong, too fast, and before I knew it, it had pounced on me, claws and teeth tearing into my flesh. As I lay there, battered and bleeding, I could hear the creature's laughter, a deep and mocking sound that sent shivers down my spine. But I refused to give up. With the strength born of desperation, I struggled to my feet and chased after the creature, determined to bring it to justice. But despite my best efforts, the creature was nowhere to be found. It had disappeared into the darkness of the woods, leaving me alone and wounded, a victim of its savage and relentless attack. And though I have spent many long nights searching for the creature, I know that it is out there somewhere, waiting for its next victim a terrifying presence in the heart of the Yellowstone National Park. In the days following the attack, I could barely bring myself to leave my home, haunted by the memory of the creature's glowing eyes and mocking laughter. But as a park ranger, I knew that I had to face my fears and return to the park to find out what had happened and ensure that the creature would not harm anyone else. With a sense of determination, I set out into the woods, my flashlight and weapon at the ready, as I made my way through the underbrush, I could sense that I was being watched, that the creature was somewhere out there waiting for me. At first I saw nothing but the shadows and the trees, the eerie silence of the forest, broken only by the sound of my own footsteps. But as I rounded a bend in the path, I caught a glimpse of movement, a flash of fur and claws that disappeared just as quickly as it had appeared. Heart racing, I ran after the creature, hoping to catch up to it before it could escape into the darkness. But as I drew nearer, I realized that I had made a fatal mistake. The creature was not alone. As I watched in horror, a pack of werewolves emerged from the trees, snarling and snapping their jaws, their eyes fixed on me with a fierce and hungry gaze. I knew then that I was in deep trouble. The werewolves were not like anything I had ever seen before, not like the creatures of legend or myth. They were real, and they were out for blood. With a fierce determination, I drew my weapon and prepared to defend myself, knowing that I would have to fight with every ounce of strength and skill that I possessed. For a moment, the forest was filled with the sound of gunfire and snarling, a fierce and desperate battle that raged on for what seemed like an eternity. But in the end, I emerged victorious. The werewolves scattered and defeated, their savage and brutal reign brought to an end. And though I knew that I had risked everything to face them, I also knew that I had done the right thing, that I had protected the people of the Yellowstone from a terrible and unstoppable threat. For though the creatures of the forest may be fierce and dangerous, there are those among us who are willing to stand up to them, to face them with courage and determination, and to fight for what is right. I was going with a friend up the canyon to test our super strong flashlight and see if we could light up a mountain. It was a snowy night and I was the passenger. We were driving for a while when I saw movement on the hillside next to the road. So I looked up and I saw something that looked like a naked figure with long legs get up and start running. It was the fastest I ever saw a living thing move. It quickly ran into the darkness away from the headlights. I pointed and yelled to my friend and he only saw a glimpse. He couldn't tell what it was, 
But he saw something, and this confirmed to me I wasn't just seeing things. It just happened and scared me really bad, and I was hoping I could get some input from this subreddit for what I may have saw. Thanks. A few months ago, around 4 or 5 a.m., I had woken up to what sounded like my cat being attacked and dragged away into the woods. I got up to open the door to my tiny house and looked outside and called my cat. He didn't come and I didn't see anything. My fiancé had gotten up and left for work at 3.45 a.m. Later that morning, I saw my cat Vishnu playing with my other cat Mavis. A couple of nights go by and I'm woken up to the sound being right out my door and it fading into the woods. This time I stayed in bed. I set up a deer cam to try and catch whatever it was making the sound, but nothing was caught on the camera. Then, a few days later, my fiancé is sitting on the porch, relaxing at 11 p.m., and he looks over about four feet away. He sees this pale creature on all fours. He went to grab his pistol to confront it. It took off. He said he got a glimpse of its face, and the expression it had was like it was worried that it was seen. Ever since then, we have not heard or seen anything. Late Fall 2010 In northern Canada, I went deep into the wilderness with my father and my eldest brother to hunt for moose. We left in the early morning, just before sunrise, trying to cover as much distance as possible before nightfall. We traveled winding rivers and had to repeatedly portage over rapids all day. We decided to set up camp just over halfway to our destination. My father figured that we'd make the rest of the journey tomorrow. Well, when everyone bedded down for the night, I decided to go grab some firewood and relieve myself down by the bank of the river, just out of reach of the light from the campfire. Out from the tree line, about fifteen yards away, I could hear rustling in the bushes. I watched the area where I heard the noise and focused on that spot. I felt kind of funny, dizzy, lightheaded. And I could smell this putrid stink like old milk or rotten food. Then I saw the trees start to morph and move ever so slightly and began to, to, to take the shape of a head and slight facial features. My eyes began to adjust it to the darkness and along the tree line. I could hear this voice coming from there. I recognized it. The voice sounded like one of my relatives who had recently passed. The face took shape of my relative. Hello, they said. I've missed you. Come see me. I smiled and stepped forward a bit, but stopped to analyze the situation. My relative's face stopped smiling and became emotionless. The skin began to turn pale and peel away. Chunks of flesh from their cheeks began to fall away, and I felt shock and fear overwhelm my body. I couldn't make sense of it at all. So I started to back away and make my way to camp. I didn't realize at the time that I had been walking towards the voice, and I was further away from the firelight. The voice became angry and began shouting at me to come here, so I turned to run away, but as I looked back one more time, I saw the most disgusting thing I'd ever seen. It was rotting flesh on gnawed bone, caved in eyes and a hollow chest cavity. This humanoid creature was tall and super thin, I ran as fast as I could, trying to yell for help, but the fear had made my voice quiet and raspy. I ran along the riverbank, and I could hear the heavy breaths and the stomping feet from this thing right behind me. I made it onto the top of the riverbank, but it grabbed a hold of my leg as I jumped. Up! I gripped and tore the grass, trying to lift myself, and yelled as loud as I could. Then finally my voice came back, and I yelled that someone has my leg. My brother woke up and ran over to where I was. Then he pulled me up and took me over to the fire. I was terrified, trying to explain what I saw and that it looked like my relative, but not. I was trying to convince them that I wasn't seeing things, but my brother nodded his head and said I saw it too, I know. That solidified it. He acknowledged that it was real. We stayed up all night after that, rifles loaded and close by. We packed up when the sun was coming up and went back home. We haven't shared that story with anyone out of fear of being labeled as crazy or liars. I've had nightmares and couldn't sleep for months afterwards. I would see things dark figures looking into my window, or hear whispers when I was walking home at night. 
Eventually, I was seeing this dark figure daily. I went to Medicine Men's Shaman for help, but I've learned that the ceremonies only relieves it temporarily. Friends have given me everything from protection pouches to certain crystals. I found out that there's a strong possibility that I encountered a Wendigo. I learned that if you encounter one and survive, it attaches itself to you like a parasite. I learned that it could only do this if it touches you, which it did. Ever since that night, I've been on edge when I enter any forest or wooded area, which sucks because I love being outdoors and hunting and in nature. Now I always feel like I need to keep my back against something when I'm out in the wild. Anyways, make your own conclusions about this. I've paid a price for being an ignorant child to the stories of old. They are real, I can attest to that. Stay safe, everyone. It all started one night a few years ago when I was hanging out with a guy friend of mine. Let's call him Don and his cousin. Dan and I had really come to bond over some of our strange beliefs and experiences. The story I'm about to tell wasn't the first foray for either of us into things of an otherworldly nature, but for me, it was one of the most significant and had a lasting impact on how I view these things. I was living in Chicago at the time and working at a bar somewhat near downtown. If you believe in superstitions and fairy tales, it would be easy to assume that strange things only happen to people deep in the woods or in remote locations, and that a city such as Chicago would be mainly devoid of supernatural or otherworldly experiences. It's easy to assume that densely populated areas wouldn't exactly be a breeding ground for this kind of strange activity, but you would be wrong. On this particular night, it was slow at work, and Dan and his cousin just happened to be in the area. He texted me to ask what my plans were, so I suggested they come to my place for a quick drink before we closed, since it was already nearing 2 a.m. I finished my side work just as they were arriving, ten minutes till two, so we all had a quick drink and took off to find another bar that was still open. But I think it must have been a Sunday or something because everything in the area was closed. So we decided to head back to our neighborhood on the far north side of the city. As we were deciding what to do, Dan casually mentioned that he knew a liquor store in the northern suburbs that was open till 3 a.m. every night. So we devised an impromptu plan to grab some beers and have a late night stroll on the nearby beach. I would like to mention that this particular beach was about a 10 minute walk from where I was living at the time and had a bike trail with a park that I would often rollerblade or walk through. When we got to the park, everything seemed normal. Both the parking lot and the park itself seemed empty, and we assumed the beach to be empty as well, as everything was perfectly quiet and still. By this time, it was about 3 a.m., so we didn't expect anyone else to be there. As we were getting our beers out of the car, I noticed it was a full moon that night. We often went on nighttime adventures in the suburbs when we were bored, although never to this particular beach, and even on college campuses we barely ever ran into anyone. But as we walked through the park, I noticed how still and quiet everything was. As soon as we stepped foot onto the sand where the beach started, something shifted. The energy changed, and we started hearing laughter. Coming from where? It sounded like it was just out in front of us a ways, just right there out in the water, but no one was there. It was a clear night, and with the full moon you could see for literally miles in every direction. There was no one there, but yet the laughing persisted, and it sounded like two voices, a man and a woman, and you could clearly hear them in the water, splashing and playing and laughing and talking, but there was just simply nobody there. At this point, we were all actively scanning up and down the beach and literally asking each other, Yo, are you guys hearing this? It sounded like they were out there playing in the waves in the middle of the night, laughing and talking. But we couldn't make out what they were saying, and we simply couldn't see anyone out there besides ourselves. We all agreed that it was weird, and maybe we should have simply taken it as a sign to leave. But we ended up deciding to simply ignore it, and headed to the opposite end of the beach. Maybe they're out there skinny dipping and they don't want us to see them. 
I offered this as a possible solution, but I think I was just trying to rationalize what didn't make rational sense. So we ignored it. We walked to the complete opposite end of the beach, which may have been roughly the size of a football field, but when we got there we noted that the voices had not changed volume. It still sounded like they were out in the waves right in front of us. So we ignored it even harder. We opened some beers, put it out of our minds, and frankly didn't think too much of it for a while as we talked about random things and I took pictures of the moon over the water. This went on for about twenty minutes and we weren't thinking too much anymore about the voices or the laughter, until it suddenly stopped. The sudden absence of sound made us immediately uneasy, mainly because what the F just happened. Why did the voices stop? Did they get sucked into an undertow? Are they out there in the waves drowning? We all looked at each other with the same question, what the F do we do? Here I am on the beach in the middle of the night, where we're not supposed to be drinking beers, and now there's people potentially drowning. What do you even do in this scenario? Call the cops. Run out and try to save them. All I can assume is that in this moment, we were all contemplating these same horrifying scenarios when I saw movement out of the corner of my eye down to the other end of the beach. A wave of relief washed over me, thinking at first that it might be these people coming up on the beach. So without even thinking, I started to point and say, look, there they are. It's two, realizing at this moment, they aren't people. It's two, dogs, and sure enough, we all see what seems to clearly be the silhouettes of two dogs trotting towards us down the beach. Now this was a decent sized beach, but these things were not simply walking. They were moving with some speed and managed to clear half of it in about as much time as it took me to process what they even were. And as they started to get closer, I started to notice that they had very large ears, tails, and paws. Holy of you guys, I don't think those are dogs, I said. Those are coyotes or something, and they're coming right at us. Now I had seen coyotes in the area, and knew they were no strangers to even densely populated areas. But seeing what appears to be two wild animals trotting towards a group of humans in the middle of the night is wildly disconcerting. At this point they suddenly stopped in their tracks about halfway down the beach. They seemed to assess us for a moment when all of a sudden I saw with all clarity the silhouettes of these two animals rise onto their hind legs and become instead the shapes of two people. Immediately I turned around to my friends and exclaimed, Tell me you just saw that shit. Yeah, said Dan, who looked terrified. They just stood up. That was all he had to say for me to know, that we had all seen the same thing. When we turned back to look, they were already gone like they had simply disappeared into thin air. Dan's cousin said, we need to get the F out of here. And so we did. But it wasn't so much sheer panic as a sense of vague unease. We didn't run away screaming. We just simply quickly grabbed our things and started walking towards the exit. As we walked past the lifeguard tower, we noticed them as if they had simply materialized again. There they were, the two of them, a silhouette of a man and a woman against the moonlit sky, sitting atop the lifeguard tower. We all slowed our step as we noticed them. Should we say something to them? I couldn't help myself. The curiosity was overwhelming. No, Dan's cousin whispered sharply at me. Dan grabbed my hand and dragged me onward. Don't say anything to them. Just keep moving. So we left. We got in the car silently. We took the short drive back to my apartment silently. We sat in the car quietly for a few minutes, smoking a cigarette. Okay, I said finally, breaking the silence, but we all experienced that shit. Right? Did we just see, like, werewolves or something? And in that few minutes, we rehashed the entire experience together, from the disembodied voices to the shape-shifting creatures. And although we agreed that we had all seen and experienced the same thing, we also noted that if we had been alone and seen something like that, we might have just written it off. I thought it was my eyes playing tricks on me, Dan said, until I realized you guys saw it too. That was basically the feeling we all had through the whole experience. As if we had tried to write it off until it was nearly staring us right in the face. But honestly, 
This wasn't my first experience with things of an otherworldly nature, and it seemed to me, from experience, that it's best to just let it go. So I did let it go. I got out of the car and went into my apartment and honestly just went straight to bed. Like I knew it was a strange thing we had all just experienced, but I really just hoped and chose to assume that that would be the end of it. And truthfully, I went to bed that night and slept like a baby. I never really felt like I was in danger or that something malicious had followed me. I thought that was the end of it until I started having dreams about them a few weeks later. As it turns out, they had followed me and they wanted to talk with me. One night, a few weeks after our sighting of the strange shape-shifting creatures, I had a dream. I didn't know that it was a dream while it was happening. It all felt so real. It was like I remembered nodding off in bed, and then I came to somewhere else. When I came to, I found myself standing on an empty beach. I quickly realized it was the same beach where we had seen the creatures a few weeks prior, but I couldn't remember how I had gotten there. I just fell asleep in my bed and woke up on the beach. The transition was so jarring I started to panic, wondering if I'd slept walk there or worse if I was losing my mind. My unease grew as I realized the winds were blowing and the skies were dark, as if there was a bad storm approaching. I thought about the things we saw on the beach that night, wondering if they had somehow led me here. As soon as the thought crossed my mind, I saw something. Black, inky, amorphous shapes rising out of the crashing waves of Lake Michigan. I worried that I had somehow disturbed some ancient lake spirits. As I watched the shapes rise out of the waves, they took the form of two large black dogs, each with glowing yellow eyes. They maintained this shape until they reached the beach, where they stood on their hind legs, and suddenly they were no longer dogs but a man and a woman. Strange, ethereal-looking people with long black hair and the same glowing yellow eyes. They just stared at me, and I stared at them, and they stared at me, and I stared at them a little while more until I finally managed to muster the words, What? Are you? They exchanged a baffled glance with each other. No, but, like, what are you? The looks of confusion on their faces grew. In fact, it seemed like a mix of confusion and offense at the very question. In my dumbfounded state, I repeated the question a few more times, What are you? But they seemed either unwilling or unable to respond to it. So I asked more questions. Different questions. Okay, if you can't tell me what you are, can you tell me where you came from? Like, have you always been on this beach? Do you come from a different realm? More looks of confusion? You can't even tell me where you came from. Like, when were you born? Do you remember being born? Suddenly the woman snapped at me. Do you remember being born? And suddenly I was the one who didn't know how to answer the question. Do you remember being a baby or an infant or even a toddler for that matter? She seemed thoroughly annoyed by my line of questioning. Well, no, of course not, I started. No, of course not, she said. You don't remember that far back? Well, neither do we. But surely you must know something about your origins or where you came from, I asked. I may not remember being born, but I have parents and family and doctors who were there to confirm when and where I was born. Well, we don't have any of that, she said matter, a factly. In fact, things like us, well, we're the oldest things we know of. We don't have parents or grandparents to ask. We don't have anyone who came before us to ask where we came from. And frankly, we simply don't remember that far back. I was dumbfounded. I had no idea how to respond. So you want to know where we come from? She continued. Well, I can't tell you that for certain. All I can tell you is my opinions, my beliefs. So if you ask me where we come from, I would say that we come from God. And I would say that it's the same God that created you, that created us, that created all of reality. But the truth is, if God does exist or some sort of creators to all of this, they quite simply are not around anymore to ask. But this is just my belief, and that's all I can give you. 
Feeling in a whirlwind from such a complex and unexpected response, I clamoured for something to follow it up with. So how old do you think you are exactly? Or how far back do you remember? She sighed a deep sigh and started pointing around in various directions, saying things like, Do you see the water? Do you see the waves on the water? Well, yes, I said, obviously I see the water. You see the beach and the grasses growing on the sand dunes? Yes, I see the beach. Do you see the hills beyond the beach and the trees growing on those hills? Yes, yes, I see the hills and the trees. What does that have to do with anything? Well, she sighed, we're old, at least as old as the landscape itself, if not older. So as long as this has been here, we've been here. As long as the water and the beach and the hills have been here, we've been here. We're as old as the hills, you might say. At this point, I was exasperated. Okay, that's all cool and good for you and whatever. But what does that have to do with me? Like, what does that have to do with me? They were both silent for a moment. Surely there's some reason you sought me out right. Surely there's some reason you've approached me to tell me all of this. More silence. So what does this have to do with me? Just then the man who hadn't said anything to me the entire time just sort of shrugged and said, I don't know. We just thought it might be nice to have a human to talk to for a change, you know. And that must have made me so angry that I woke myself up because the last thing I remember is yelling for a change from what. And then I was waking up in my bed and it was morning. I had more dreams of them after this. Most of them were vague and I couldn't really remember much. When I told my friend Dan about this, I was surprised to hear him say that he had been having dreams about them too. He didn't claim to remember having any specific conversations with them. Just vague dreams of shape-shifting entities. But as for me, I did have one other dream where a conversation was had. In this dream, I was at work. In real life, I work as a server, but for some reason in this dream, I was the bartender. It was the same bar, however, that I was working at in real life at the time. It was a slow night. There were a few tables, but no one at the bar. I was contemplating stepping out for a cigarette when a woman walked through the front door. Immediately, she caught my eye. Something about her was dreamlike. The way she moved was ethereal. She had long, black, wavy hair that seemed to flow unnaturally, and she may have been wearing a fur coat. When she sat down and made eye contact with me, I immediately noticed her eyes. They were a bright, vibrant, and unnatural shade of yellow, almost as if they were glowing. I just knew as soon as I looked at her that everything about her was entirely strange. But I didn't know that this was a dream. And I didn't want her or any of the other customers to think I was crazy, so I greeted her as I would any customer. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Yeah, she said, in a complete non squiture So I've been really into werewolves lately. She slammed both hands down on the bar emphatically as she said the word, werewolves, staring at me with wide eyes and a strange grin. Hmm, okay, I responded her comments catching me off guard. Yeah, have you ever heard of werewaves? At this point I was or or cryptids. Have you heard of those? In my mind I'm thinking, lady, is this your first day on planet Earth? Who hasn't heard of werewolves? But I just laughed uncomfortably and played along. Yes, I've heard of them. Why? Okay, so you've heard of werewolves and cryptids and stuff. Cool. Yeah, I'm like really into that stuff. Like I want to know all of the folklore about these things and I want to know what people think about these things. That's cool. Can I get you a drink? Honestly, I was just trying to hurry up and serve her so I could go out for a smoke. She ordered a beer. I poured it and handed it to her and she continued on with her strange line of questioning. So have you ever seen anything like that? She asked as I handed over her beer. Like what? Like a werewolf. Yes, silly, like a werewolf. She made a playful smirk. Because I just want to know. 
I want to know what people think about these things. Well, I was about to step out front for a quick smoke, if you don't mind. Maybe we can continue this conversation when I get back. At this point, I was honestly getting more than a little weirded out by her energy and her attempts at talking about some weird shit with me. Sure, she said, so I went outside, but as soon as I lit my cigarette, I turned around and she was standing behind me. I'm sorry. I just couldn't wait. I wanted to talk about it now. I don't want to freak you out. I'm just conducting some research, you know. Trying to find out what people think about these things. I tried to steer the conversation politely back to her by flipping the question. Well, what do you think about these things? Do you believe in werewolves? I don't really know. I just want to know what you think. Like I'm fascinated by the kinds of stories and myths people tell. The good, the bad, the ugly. I don't care. I just want to know. Do you have any stories? Any experiences? This went on a few more times, with me trying to redirect the conversation and her directing it back at me, until finally I told her firmly but nicely, look, I do believe in these things and I would love to have that conversation. I really would, but I'm at work right now and this isn't the time or the place, you know. Like I can't be standing out front smoking cigarettes and talking about this kind of stuff with people. I'm sorry, I just really can't talk about this stuff at work, that's all. That's okay, she sighed. I understand. I really should get going anyways. She smiled kind of a dejected smile, and I suddenly felt a little bad for being so dismissive. Okay, I said, I'm sorry, I can't talk more about that stuff right now, but I have to get back to work. Okay, she said, have a good one, and she started to walk off down the street. As I walked back through the door, I stopped and for some unknown reason joked, Oh, by the way... You're my favorite cryptid. She winked at me, and as I was walking back through the door into the building, everything made sense. I realized this was a dream. I realized who she was and why she was asking these questions. And I turned back around and ran out the door as if I was going to confront her. But I woke up. I moved away from that apartment and from Chicago. Completely after that, I moved back home to Michigan. I still have strange dreams sometimes, but I'm not sure if those particular entities followed me or not. If I'm being honest, at the end of the day, they were pretty interesting to talk to, and I think if I got the chance, I would talk to them again sometime. So that's the story of how I met the Loop Guru, and they were pretty nice, actually. Hope you enjoyed reading it. If anyone has any insights or has experienced anything similar, I'd love to hear it. My theory is that these were not actually werewolves at all, but rather some type of fey entities. I'd love to hear others' thoughts. The following is my story of my encounter with what I believe to be some unknown predator. This story is 100% true and not a work of fiction. I have no idea what I encountered, but I believe it was some animal unknown to science currently. This was in the late 2000s in Helmand Province, southern Afghanistan. Late summer, around four or five months into our tour. A mission we were supposed to deploy on was changed the day before due to an operational incident, and it was completely changed, so I find the odds of a security leak incredibly unlikely. We were dropped off at the far end of a mountain range and had to hike our way up while it was dark and wait up the top. It took us around two hours to reach the top of the mountains, if I recall correctly. The mission was to wait on top overnight and sleep for several hours and before sunrise, head down into the green zone, deep into enemy territory, in order to gain the element of surprise, and in order to assault Taliban position. This was a very rural area, and off the track. It would have been an incredibly difficult place for a civilian to reach. We were incredibly fit and robust, yet found it hard going. At some point during the night, I have no idea what time, but it was dark. My friend who was next to me nudged me awake, and was looking in front of him at a cave entrance not far in front of us, perhaps 10 to 15 feet in front. I listened closely in order to hear what was going on and noticed that I could hear the sound of what appeared to be a baby crying. This absolutely perplexed my brain given the location, but several moments later, the really scary thing happened. I noticed that the sound that I was hearing of the baby crying was on a loop, like maybe a five or six second loop, repeating over and over again. 
Suddenly a rush of terror came over me and I immediately thought of some strange animal impersonating a vulnerable human, much like the way cats and birds can mimic human sounds. It repeated for maybe five to ten minutes before stopping. Then nothing but eerie silence. No movement, no voices. Nothing. To this day, I have no idea what it could have been. I really doubt it was the enemy forces as the odds of them knowing we would be there, given the last minute change, is incredibly unlikely. Plus, it would have been much easier to just attack us. I genuinely believe this was some undiscovered attempting to lure us down into the cave. I have no idea for what purpose, but I don't it was anything friendly. I'm also happy to answer any questions you may have. It was over ten years ago, but I will do my best to recall the details. I am Manny, a Bigfoot researcher. I was doing a follow-up on a incident that involved two married couples that were camping out at a local skinny dipping rock quarry. This is what took place. There were two groups involved, which consisted of two married couples. They were camping together. They had been swimming in the night when they started to hear what appeared to be high-pitched screams at a distance. They then got nervous because this was unlike anything they had ever heard. At that point, they get out of the water and proceed to walk back to camp. Their camp only being a minute walk. They had a campfire going and talking among themselves, when all of a sudden they started to hear the high-pitched screams once again. But this time, much closer and louder, this went on for about ten minutes. They started to get very uncomfortable because they knew whatever it was coming toward their location. And then there was silence. Minutes later, they started to hear branches break around their campsite. One of the men got out his point .22 caliber rifle out and started shooting. They heard nothing after that took place. Then a while later, the high-pitched screams started again, but from a distance away, until they could no longer hear them. They spent the night there and left in the morning. When I did this follow-up, it was two days since it happened. The information that I was able to gather from the location and witnesses were this. The high-pitched screams were heard from the north to northeast. The area is heavily wooded with some underbrush. This location is pretty much on flat ground. Howard Prairie Lake is under a one-fourth mile away. Given that in this general area was dry, I began to do a perimeter search walking north from the rock quarry, sweeping the ground for any traces. But after about three hours of looking around, I was unable to find anything. The ground was to dry as well as the grass. Weather was warm and clear skies. Just to clarify things before I describe my encounter, I live in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I go hunting near a lake around 20 miles where I live, located near a small town every Saturday. Today, just before the afternoon, I was in my usual hunting spot for around half an hour. A few dozen minutes prior, I had seen a few bucks sprint from the woods and down the river bank, as if they were running away from something. Then I heard some loud movement coming from the brush across the river. Another buck had come running out from the forest and down the same area where the other buck had gone. This time a giant grizzly bear had stormed out of the brush in pursuit. This thing was absolutely massive, so big that I can see it clear as day from across the river. I could guess it was four meters in length and probably around eight feet in height. The thing was absolutely enormous and muscular and also had a big hump around where the neck was. I watched it run down the side of the river bank, chasing the buck until it had disappeared into the woods. After that, I no longer felt safe having a gargantuan bear running around my hunting spot, so I left, and I don't feel safe going back. There are no grizzly bears in Saskatchewan, as I only have experience with a few black bears around where I hunt. I've never seen this thing before, let alone a brown bear in my area, Something of this size could devastate the ecosystem if it's invasive. Thanks for listening and being part of our horror family of ghouls. Don't forget to hit a notification bell like button and subscribe. See you tomorrow.